think Peter had left England under 21s and um, I still spoke to him throughout the period that um, he was there. And um, I knew there was a chance, a possibility he was going to get a, a job and he always said he would sign me again for some reason. Um, and um, at the start of pre-season I was at Oxford and they had um, begun negotiations and it seemed to drag on for a while. Um, didn't think at one point it was going to happen. Eventually it did. And my first ever um, meeting with the chairman was the start of negotiations. And that was an experience. <laughs> a good negotiator. <laughs> the chairman, he's yeah. uh, that's one I put it, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we, we spoke for about two hours and end up agreeing the deal that I wanted to get at the start. But um, every five minutes he kept changing the deal. And I'm thinking, all right, that's quite good then. And he actually worked out. It was, it was just uh, totally different to what appeared. <laughs> but no, he's really good. And to be fair, my first impressions of him were um, somebody you'd like to work with, real good character, real um, good presence about him and, and hoping to, to do well for Gillingham. And, and to be fair, it was a, a real good meeting. I enjoyed it and got a good feeling from it. And I was happy when we actually came to an agreement about the deal and signed on the Thursday, I think, or Wednesday. And met the players either on the Thursday or the Friday and played the game on the Saturday. So I'd only really met them for the training session, I think. And, and uh, so it was, a, it was a bit of a whirlwind experience, but it was brilliant all the same. On meeting the, the players for the first time, did you sense any kind of hangover effects from the previous playoff final against Man City, which we lost on penalties? Um, not really, no. I'd watched the, the, that final back in Scotland. The only player I knew was Paul Smith. Um, he knew one of my teammates at South End and we'd met up socially with Paul. Um, so I watched the game hoping that they would win. And obviously everybody knows the story of that game and unbelievable um, game. And it was, um, I, was, I was disappointed for him. And um, for then it turned around and I signed for him. It was a bit of a coincidence. Um, but the first day I met the players, it was probably um, really difficult to tell that they'd been in that situation because they're a team full of um, real big characters, strong characters, and, and that shone through the first day. And I never ever felt that that would be something that would hold them back, and, and thankfully it didn't. Now, I think you scored on your debut, didn't you? Which was a yes. uh, bless them. Um, and then I think during the season, you'd scored, I think, 12 goals in, in 16 games. So you had a really good. Mm -hmm. And after having that as a collective, a fairly slow start, we, we slowly yeah. build some momentum. Yeah, it's difficult because of, um, not because of necessarily what happened the previous year, that maybe played a small part in it, but it was um, a new manager with a different way of playing and the the players there had played a, a, a different style, very successful style under the previous manager. Um, so to try and change that in a small space of time is always going to be tough. And it takes positive results to reinforce that these things are working. And you get a slow start, it can be difficult. Um, but as soon as the players got on a, a run, the confidence grew and the self-belief grew and they could see that things were working. It was pretty plain to see that it was going to be a successful season. And they kind of run a um, wins. And that, that does wonders for everybody's confidence and self-belief. And, and that starts um, being the win habit. And that's what happened. And they went on a, a great run throughout um, that, that period just after the start. Was there a game or a point during the season where you felt in the back of your mind, this is our year, we, we've, we've got a score good enough to go up? Um, I think for me, at the start of the season, I was unsure what to expect because I never really knew any of the players, apart from Paul. Um, but right from the first training session, I felt that the quality was there um, to, to go and have a successful season. But the main thing was the real unity and the real team spirit between them. You can have the best players in the world, but if you've not got the right team unity and, and spirit, you've got no chance of succeeding. So I felt right at the beginning that they had the chance. Um, but there wasn't really one game where I felt, yeah, this is going to be the season. It was just a, a, a continuation of a win and run then doing well in the FA Cup. And, and these things are the things we start thinking after you know, five or six games, yeah, we've got a real good chance. But... I was always very confident in, in the players, and especially the manager. I'd worked with him before and I knew what he could, 
he could bring to the team and um, always felt confident that it'd be a successful season. Talk us through that cut run because it, it was uh, an entertaining one, wasn't it? Especially uh, yeah. the Wednesday, you had some cracking games. Yeah, some real good games. Um, I think the, the sort of two or three games I don't remember so the, the Premiership games we beat um, Bradford. Um, was it three one? I think. Um, yeah, I'm sure, it was a midweek game. Um, brilliant atmosphere. The place was bouncing. Um, thoroughly deserved to beat them. I think we got ahead and they get back in the game. Um, I scored a real good goal. To be fair, um, <laughs> the first goal and locked the goalkeeper. And a lot of people thought it was an own goal, so um, I was a wee bit disappointed. It was, it was a flick, goal. wasn't it? It was a flick. It was because I was running away for goals and. Got behind the defender and had to flick it way, sort of outside my right boot to go back the way. And uh, luck enough, it went in. Um, good goal. I think Ash got the second goal, was it? Um, uh, but Ashby got one of the goals, yeah, definitely. He got one of the goals. <laughs> I always remember he got one of the goals because I was in a goal bonus and uh, he wasn't. <laughs> I mean, he headed it down. Um, it looked as if I just got a flick of it, a wee touch in, I didn't. Um, I'd said to him, <laughs> I said, why don't you say it? the chairman that uh, I've scored the goal and we'll, we'll have the bonus? He's like, great idea. Went to the chairman, the chairman says, no, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Never fail for that one. He's, um, he's smarter than that. Yeah, I think he's, he's heard that one before. Yeah, so Bradford, brilliant experience. Sheffield Wednesday again. Um, big players. Um, they were paying big money that time and, and we didn't have a great first half, second half they played really well, um, forced the tempo and got on the lead and, and again thoroughly deserved to win it. Then going to Chelsea in the, the quarter final and I thought we started well for the first three minutes <laughs> and after that was a bit of a struggle. But it was a great experience, got to Stamford Bridge and playing in front of a big crowd and some big name players and the players were never phased about that. Um, they'd done really well in the game, obviously the final result was, was a bit of a sore one but I think we played them the Saturday and the Sunday, then the Tuesday we had to go to some like Chesterfield away, something stupid like that, and a real tough night, tough game, and we ended up drawing nine each. Um, so that was right back to reality after the highs of, of playing at Stamford Bridge. I guess that's the reality of Cup and League football, though, isn't it? One minute you can't yeah. you know, see the next minute you're, you're back to, one side the grind, but it's back to your bread and butter, isn't it? Absolutely, but as I say, that was a good thing. Um, the whole, the whole team, the whole squad, the whole um, environment around about the club. It's a it's a well run club. It's a friendly um, down to earth club, and doesn't get carried away. And even though that they had the higher playing Chelsea away, they, they soon regrouped for for the next game and for the, the push to to get promoted for them. And that sums up the whole ethos about the club and, and the people involved. Who did you swap shirts with after the Chelsea game? Uh, nobody. And that was no, no done thing in their days. I think uh, you just kept. In fact, you didn't get to keep your shirt. It was costing too much money. Actually, when they let you do that. <laughs> um, no, I, I think I, I don't think it's, I've not got MDLC's shirt ever. So it was not something I've ever done. I was ever interested in. Gotcha. Well, uh, of course, the season progressed, and although we missed out on automatics into the playoffs. We went, of course, yep. through Stoke City. Um, what was the mood like of the boys going into the playoffs? Of course, you don't want to go into the playoffs and, and, and not win them. I guess as a collective, you had to be fairly upbeat and trying, although you weren't there the year before. Yeah. You had to get last year out of your mind. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, probably a bit more, um, a wee bit more nervous this time for some of the players because you knew how big it was to get to the final and, and have the chance to get promoted and how it was um, snatched away from the previous year. So, I don't know, somebody at the door. Oh, <laughs> Amazon delivery probably. My daughter's getting it. <laughs> um, uh, so, it was probably a bit nervous for some of them. Um, but again, as I keep going back to, the, the big um, thing about that squad is the, the personalities and the character and they can... Um, throw these things to their mind and concentrate on the job in hand. Um, but probably the semi-finals, probably the most nervous because you know you're, you're two games away from getting back to Wembley and it was um, and Stoke were a tough team, big, strong, physical team and, and they made it difficult for most teams. And you're looking back on 
the fact that we still went to Wrexham and, and won the game mm-hmm. there to get automatic promotion, that just shows you the achievement to, to come back for that on top of last year and still to go and, and win against Stone and get to the final. It was an incredible achievement. How important was the the, the presence of, of, of Peter Taylor? Just how significant a part did he play? Not just in terms of what he did on the field, but psychologically. Yeah. Um, Peter signed me in 1994, so I'd known him for um, five, six years bef- um, before I signed for Gillingham. And he's just a real good um, man manager, great coach, and he knows how to... Um, read a situation and, and get the best out of players. And it's not all the, um, the nice parts that you see. He can throw a wee, bit of, a wee bit of an argument in there as well. And I had a few of them with, with him myself. <laughs> um, but he just knows the mood and he knows when to lighten it, but he also knows when to, to be serious and, and get the, the work head on. And, and that was a good thing about him. And, and as I said, it was... When you mix that in with the group of players that we had and the group of people we had, it was a, it was a great combination. And it certainly made a big difference. Um, if you look at the, the team that Tony Pullis um, put together before Peter came in, that was crucial to get promoted. Then you add in um, the parts that, that Peter brought in terms of new players and also um, a new way of playing. It was it was a key, key thing to get them promoted and end up. Very calm person. Um, he, he analyses the game really well and, and knows where to, to, to change things and, and, and that was one of his strengths and he was the main reason in my mind why why Dylan got promoted You talk about characters and big players that don't come much bigger in Gillingham terms than Andy Hessenthaler just how crucial was his goal at the Britannia to make it 3-2 it just seemed to swing the momentum in our favour slightly um, small in stature, uh, tiny, um, but hearty a line and, and a great footballer. Um, he, he drove the team on um, throughout that season and it sums up his contribution when you look at the goal. It's possibly if he had never scored that, it would have been really difficult to, to come back and, and, and be stopped by the amount of goals needed. Um, but that, that flipped the, the tie and the balance of the tie. They felt as if they were in the ascendancy and Hess has scored that. An unbelievable goal, and as I say, it sums up his, his contribution, not only in that season, but um, previous seasons and the seasons after him. He's been a big um, reason why Gillingham have, have done really well over the years, and that definitely swung the tie in, in Gillingham's favour. Back to Priestfield, and Stoke made it as tough as they possibly could have done in the circumstances. We, we managed to prevail. What was, was the mood like after the, the full-time whistle? Um, it was very jubilant, as you could expect. Uh, the players were, were absolutely delighted and um, really looking forward to going back to, to Wembley. I think the key thing when you go to a playoff final is having the experience that I've been there before can help you the next year. And I, and I felt that was one of the differences and, um, they learned from the previous year, but they knew it was coming. I mean, you know what's coming, it's, it's easier to deal with it. I went to a playoff final two years later with the QPR. And it was the first time we went to the Millennium Stadium against Cardiff. And it was the first time they'd been there. And they know that they struggled, but they just they had the experience to, to draw on and, and they found it difficult. And we lost by one goal. But I just felt that um, the players knew after the final whistle what they were going to face against um, Wigan at, at Wembley. And, and as I say, that's why there was a, a lot of excitement and um, quite rarely so. It was an unbelievable achievement. There's not many teams that, that come back from um, what happened to them, but there's not many teams that come back the next year after been a, losing a playoff final to have a successful season, and they did. And as I say, it was thoroughly deserved. Well, let's talk about the final then, that, that memorable final. Um, I know you were named among the substitutes, Tom, but in, yeah. I'm sure... You wanted to, to to start, but when you are on the bench, do you actually feel more nervous because you can't actually influence what's going on in front of you? Um, in some circumstances, you do. In other circumstances, it's it's different. You might get caught up in the game, and and um, you're, you're not really worried about the nerves side of the thing. Um, definitely, when you're a coach or a manager, it's it's tougher than being a, a sub. 
Um, I was just delighted to be on the bench. I'd been out injured for a long period, maybe six mm -hmm. weeks with a bad ankle, ankle injury, and it wasn't really 100% right to be on the bench. And Peter had asked me if I was fit enough, and I said, ah, of course I'm not. Always. Um, you say yes, don't you? Always, Every always. time. Every time. There's nothing wrong with it. It still gives me problems to this day, <laughs> um, but it was worth it. Um, so I'd now delighted to be on the bench, and now I wouldn't say nervous, I just I loved um, being at Wembley for a, a Scots Scotsman to go to Wembley. Um, it's a huge thing. I grew up watching Scotland, playing England at Wembley. And I'd only ever been once, and that was to watch Scotland via England at Wembley with some of the general players. Um, so the experience of going there was just great for me. And as I say, I, I felt very calm because when you look around that, that dressing room, that gives you the calmness because you know that no matter what happens, the players will give everything. They'll be fully committed and whatever happens in the game, they'll do their best to try and win. Of course, we took the lead. Um, I think he went down to his own goal, but I'm sure if he will, uh, no. when I speak to Never him tomorrow. Goal. <laughs> I think um, <laughs> when any striker gives in with a, a, a defender like that, and, it's always a striker's goal. If it was a real um, good addition to the squad during the season and he fully deserved that goal, he was not only was he great on the pitch, he was great off the pitch. And as I say, he made a big difference with his, um, his character on and off the pitch. And he fully deserved that goal. And in my mind, it was definitely his. We, we are definitely giving it to Iffy 100%. We're not <laughs> going to rewrite the history books. It's if you knew it was going. Well, the chairman gave him a window, a, a goal <laughs> bonus, and that enough. But for chairman's watching, he owes him a goal bonus now. So uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't think he should be waiting too long on that one coming through. He might be out of pocket. Um, <laughs> so half time, he wandered up. Um, what was Peter's mood like at half time? He, he always comes across a very calm character, um, quite um, forward thinking, but also that doesn't get too up, doesn't get too down. But what were his words to the players? The idea, I can't even remember. It was that long ago? Um, but what I do know is, as you say, he's very calm and calculated and analyses things really well. And if the occasion calls for uh, raised voices, he'll do that. But I'm sure he'd have been calm and and um, go through the, the points where we've done well and, and the points where we can we can do better. Um, that was his manner throughout the season most of the time, and, and I'm sure on that occasion it was the same. For what I recall, it wasn't a very good first half. Years. I, I felt that um, there wasn't even much in the game and probably Wigan like, might have been on top and um, we could have played a bit better. But you're one now up in, in the games. That's that's a key thing is, is getting ahead and, and holding the lead. So I'm sure he'd have been calm and, and trying to um, focus on the parts we could have done better in the game. Of course, they brought it back to 1-1. One, one. I think Simon Hayworth scored the goal. Um, and we go to extra time, as we had done the previous year. So a lot of players, it might have been deja vu. Um, mm -hmm. Extra time starts, and then Peter says, "Tomo, you're coming on." Some remember when he yeah. with the nod? Yeah, um, I think their their first goal was an absolute brilliant finish. Mm. The guy and flicked over Vinny and and at the back post. And as I say, they probably deserved that. Getting the extra time, the players. I'm under no doubt we're thinking about the, the previous year and it was amazing how it was going back into extra time and how the things were going. Um, when he told me to get ready, I was going on and as I say, I was very calm and very focused and I did have a real positive feeling that I would score. Um, Wigan was a team that I'd always done well against and with a couple of big defenders there who, who wanted to, to play against big players. They don't want to play against somebody with a wee bit of a movement and you know, in front of them, try to get behind them. They hate that. And I was confident. And as soon as I went on the pitch, I, I'm sure I got a, a chance early on or, or something. I felt, yep, I feel good here. I, I think, I think um, if a chance comes along, we'll take it. And I'm sure I wasn't on for long, but as far as I recall, I get three or four real good opportunities in that and, and managed to take one of them. Yeah, I think having gone two one down, it was the introduction yeah. of you and um, Stevie Butler. So yeah. I think we've got six, seven minutes left on the clock. I don't know if players watch the clock, but when Stevie does make it two two, yeah. are you 
in the back of your mind thinking I might have to take a penalty? Um, do you know what? A great question, but I don't remember that. I, I do remember um, in the final two years later for QPR, I was down to hit either the fourth or fifth penalty, and it was nil nil with a few minutes to go, and I knew then I was hitting a penalty. Um, Against Wigan, I, I don't remember, and I think the reason I don't remember it is because I genuinely felt at that moment that we could go on and score and, and win the game because um, we were getting loads of chances, balls into the box, and eventually teams will crumble if you keep coming in with the quality that we've got and with loads of bodies in the box. They're saying Steve Butler scored a brilliant goal, absolutely first class uh, header, a great uh, cross in from Junior and Steve's. Um, Ability down the top corner, and at that moment there was, as I said, penalties never entered my mind, and maybe entered some of the other players' mind. But I generally felt that we had an opportunity to go and win it, even though there were only a few minutes to go. And um, luckily enough, we did. Before I come on to your goal, which every fan will be wanting me to ask you now, had yeah. penalties, would you have taken one? Absolutely. Um, I'm sure quite a few of them would have taken one, and it's easy saying it now, but yeah, I'd, I'd have taken one. Um, taking penalties is uh, nobody can take it, it's, it's down to you know, your calmness and composure, and especially under pressure. I'd like to say I'd, I'd have taken a penalty, and, and uh, if you score great, if you miss, there's not much you can do about it. You just go and, and try your best in a situation. Um, I think if I recall the previous game, only one player scored in the penalty shootout. Yeah, it was only one. Yeah, we had, we had a few miss. Yeah. So, um, so it'd be interesting to see if the people who had missed. That was going to be my next question. Would, would those who had oh, missed the year so before it. step up? Um, do you know what? I'm, I'm sure they would have done. I'm sure they'd have volunteered and I'm sure um, they would have, would have taken one. As far as I remember, I'm, I'm sure they would practice them on the pitch at Priestfield beforehand. Um, but they're easy. Very easy. Yeah. It's, it's, everybody says practice them, and you can. But it's, it's when you get in the moment and the crowds there and the pressure there, and that's why people who take the fourth or penalty either miss or score more um, mm. because the pressure is always on the fourth or fifth one. And as I say, I'm, I'm convinced a lot of the players would have, would have put their hands up for a penalty, and I'm not convinced they scored, but um, I'm, I'm sure they'd have volunteered and. Would have no trouble getting um, penalty takers on that occasion. Well, fortuitously, they weren't needed. So uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's go to the goal. I think Carlos yeah. just had a very good chance save. And uh, yes. it was interception in our penalty area. And Nicky Southall comes away with the ball. And Junior Lewis receives it and has Ty Gooden on, on the left. Yeah. As, soon as Ty receives the ball, are you thinking, well, he's going to whip it in. I just need to find half a yard. Um, you, you don't get time really to think. It's just it comes to the sort of automatic reactions at that moment. It's, it's that quick. Um, you, you can't think too much about it. But you're always taught get across the front post, get across the front front post. But if you watch games at the weekend, there's not many goals scored across across the front post because every defender knows that you're trying to get across the front post. So the, the timing is key and um, by God, I knew he could deliver a real good ball and, and I, I, I seen the space at the front post and, and I knew that um, with good timing I could get across him and, and luckily enough I did. When he, when he did make contact, did you think it was going in? Yes, yes. I, I, knew, as soon as, I knew as soon as Ty put the ball in and the defender... Um, basically made his first step towards me. So I, I've made a move to behind him and when he comes with me and he's in his, his back foot, that's when you then get across him. And I, I knew then that the timing was good. And it's the most difficult thing to get right is the timing of, of moving the defender away from the front post initially so you can then get across him. And I, I knew as soon as he put his weight in his back foot, I was across him and, and the, the cross in was great. And, yeah, and I knew it was in straight away, and as I say, it was a, a great ball in, and all you need to do is really, you're always going to score. And that legendary photograph, as you reel away, both hands in the air, um, I'm sure, yeah. long in your memory, um, 
but did you really believe that 20 years later it would still hold the significance that it does now? Um, no, not really. You never think of these things and I was no one for really celebrating too much when I scored, so um, that's probably over-celebrating for me, but as I say, it was just brilliant to, to score the goal and for it to be 20 years ago and um, it's still to be remembered is brilliant. Um, the thing that I remember most is the goal was great and getting promoted was great, but it was really the, the connections you make with your, your teammates and the people you play with throughout that period of time and the supporters and, and everybody at the club and, uh, and that really makes it um, even more special. It's, it's all right to it's been great to score for any club there, but it was a real um, special bond between the players and the staff and supporters. And, and that's why it's still remembered. And, and, and that's why it's great. We've been embarrassed that um, I didn't play all the games and I ended up getting the credit for it. But <laughs> just the way football works, but it probably sums up um, our squad. There, there was not really one player who really was outstanding compared to the rest of them. It was just a real strong squad of people. Um, the squad got us there. You look at uh, Junior's cross and, and Ty putting the ball in and, and everybody else who, who played their part. And it was a real strong squad of players and, and then that's why it's great to be associated with them and I'm thoroughly delighted that it's the whole remembered after this time. Well, that, that game is always, whenever Jules fan speaks to me, it's Oh, uh, have you mm. okay? Do you remember that goal by Tomo? It just seems that iconic moment, which might embarrass you, but must have been very <laughs> to be a part of looking yeah, back. No, that one it was as brilliant as I say. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing to be part of, and um, something I always look back on my, my real uh, good memories. Um, and even though I'm a long way away back up in Scotland, it's, it's still. Um, comes up here every so often. Every every week, somebody will mention it. And to be fair, if they don't mention it, I'll mention it to them. You don't look any older. You look exactly the same. <laughs> I've, um, I, I probably look after myself better these days than what I did um, back then. In, in terms of fitness, I was always injured, and um, that was a, probably one negative about my time in England that I never really got a, a real run of games and proper fitness to, to, to get into the games because I always felt as if I was when I was fit and, and uh, playing regular I would score so that, that's the one disappointment but no um, I'm still involved in the coaching up here and, and that keeps me that keeps me fit and, and keeps me active and but looking back in, in that day 20 years ago it was, it's incredible to still remember it and, and it does bring back great memories for, for me my family and everybody involved. 